Right now, the Democrats have the slimmest of majorities in the U.S. Senate. The balance of power, 50-50, with Vice President Kamala Harris as the tie-breaking vote. Now, CNN has identified the 10 Senate seats most likely to flip in 2022. 34 Senate seats in all are at stake next year. And I want to bring the panel back with me because we want to do a little bit of a lightning round. What race are you watching uh, that you find most interesting? And ever the contrarian, J-Mart obviously picked a race that is not in our top 10. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the Alabama Senate race, but, and I will grant him this as a very good political reporter, it is a fascinating Republican primary. Yes. Tell me why, J-Mart, when it comes to Mo Bricks and Katie Britt. Because this is not about control of the Senate necessarily, but it has everything to do with the future of the Senate, the future of Congress, um, and what the GOP is going to look like. And the sort of nutshell version of this is you have Mo Brooks, who is one of the biggest voices on January 6th, urging people to fight like hell in the Capitol, uh, who's in the House, who's running for the Senate as Trump's endorsement, running against somebody who is uh, a, a former aide to Senator Shelby, who's retiring who is the Mitch McConnell preferred candidate, to be blunt about it, who is much more traditional mainstream conservative. Now, either of them is going to win the seat probably in the general election, but it's this kind of race bill that's going to shape what the Senate becomes and the GOP becomes in the year and the years ahead. Is it going to be more of a Donald Trump party or more of a traditionalist Mitch McConnell, Dick Shelby party. Yeah, it's such a good window into it. And you talk about where Trump has influence on primaries. Mal, you're looking at Georgia, and Donald Trump made that Republican candidate. It's Herschel Walker, I think by all accounts, be running against Raphael Warnock, a fascinating race. Warnock won his Senate runoff on January 5th. President, uh, uh, President Biden flipped Georgia for the first time uh, since 1992, if I remember correctly. What are you looking at in this race right now? Well, I think Georgia, once again, is going to be the epicenter for the battle for the control of the Senate. Uh, Democrats see this as a state that's been trending purple. They see Herschel Walker as a really flawed candidate. He has a trail of allegations behind him involving problematic and erratic behavior. And I also think Stacey Abrams jumping into the governor's race and ensuring that voting rights are going to be center stage is also going to turbocharge the battle. Uh, Democrats see that as favoring them. But Republicans have really warmed up to Walker, including Mitch McConnell, they were impressed by his fundraising, impressed by his television performances. And it's really important that McConnell did get behind Walker because essentially it avoids what would have been a really messy civil war in the GOP between Trump and McConnell. So that is eliminated now. I think the big X factor that I'm watching, not just in Georgia and all the Senate rates, but especially in Georgia, is whether the continued false claims of voter fraud by Trump and other Republicans in the party are going to depress voter turnout. That is something that most Republican leaders want to keep in the rear view mirror, but it'll be interesting to see whether Trump can restrain himself, especially if he's out there stumping for candidates in Georgia. Yeah, no, no question about it. And Francesca, another race where the president, former president, has a whole lot of influence right now in the Republican primary, North Carolina. What are you watching? North Carolina is on your list, but the reason that it's on mine is less about whether it'll flip and more about former President Donald Trump. It'll be a true test of the power of his endorsement. He's endorsed Ted Budd, who is also backed by the influential conservative group Club for Growth. Ted Budd is competing against former Republican governor of the state, Pat McCrory, as well as former Representative Mark Walker in the House. Now, the former president, Trump, he was part of a group of people who tried to influence Mark Walker to get out of that race, to run for a House race instead in order to help Ted Budd. Walker hasn't dropped out of that race yet, but is currently considering it. Meanwhile, you've got Club for Growth spending $10 million in that race to try and boost Ted Budd. What are they zeroing in on? That Trump endorsement. Club for Growth thinks that if they can tell voters about the Trump endorsement, which voters might not know about because Trump is no longer in the White House, isn't on major social media platforms, that that will encourage GOP voters to back Ted Budd in that primary. Will that be an effective strategy? We'll have to wait until May to find out now that the March primary has been pushed to May. Yeah, delayed, more fascinating months ahead in North Carolina. Jay Mart, I want to go back to you because the political story yeah. that kind of shook Washington last week was your story about another race that isn't going to be competitive in a general. But whether or not Senator John Thune, widely expected to be right. one of, if not the heir apparent to Mitch McConnell, is considering retiring. Everybody wants to know why you wrote it, and does it mean one way or the other? <laughs> I think I had a thousand people ask me who I thought your sources were on that, which I will not ask you. But what do you think this means that Senator Thune is considering retiring? Oh, I think it tells you a lot about both um, 
just how difficult it has become to serve in Congress in general, the sort of strain, especially for the Republicans who are not the Trump fans, but have to obviously uh, suppress what they really think of the former president because their base mostly uh, still likes the former president. Uh, and, and I think more broadly, uh, it tells you a lot about the changing nature of the Republican Party. Uh, if you just go back, Phil, to 2018, uh, you'll see a succession of GOP lawmakers who chose to retire rather than run again because they just didn't want to deal with the hassle of either contending with a primary or serving in a Trump-dominated party anymore. And you can start with Bob Corker and Jeff Flake in 2018, take it to the present day. And I th if Thune does retire, it would be kind of the exclamation point uh, on those lawmakers. John Thune, only 60 years old, uh, choosing to retire on the precipice of potentially being the leader, would send a loud statement about yeah. uh, who is and is not eager to serve in today's GOP Congress. Yeah. That said, Phil, I think we're going to know some news here pretty soon on this front from Senator Thune. Uh, there's definitely folks in Congress who still think he's inclined to run again. Yes, then why? They say he's a competitor. How do you walk away right now when you have a chance to be leader?